Hey everybody, I'm Shauna and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the requirements for admission into a U.S. medical school. Before we get started, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and subscribe and press the notification bell so that you guys are the first to know when I release the next video. So if you haven't checked out my first two videos where I talk about how to become a doctor, the overall process, as well as the most frequently asked questions that I receive on TikTok, check out those two videos. I'll link them here and they'll be in the description box below. Now, why is it important to know the certain requirements for medical school? Obviously, it's so competitive to get into a medical school that you must know the classes and courses that you need to take prior to applying. And then the big thing is, is that every medical school has different requirements. So I just want to go over the basic application requirements needed. So in this video, we'll talk about what you should major in and the prerequisite requirements, as well as MCAT requirements, what you should put on your resume or CV, and then of course, letters of recommendation. So when it comes to what you should major in, I know you guys hate to hear it and it doesn't really help you, but the true and honest answer is that it does not matter what you major in to go to medical schools. Medical schools will not have a preference over somebody because they have a biology degree versus someone who has a degree in arts. All they want to see is that you are committed to something. So if you complete a four year bachelor degree in any major, that shows them that, hey, I am committed to education, point blank period. If you decide to pursue a degree in another area other than science, it actually may make you look a little bit more well-rounded because they want to see that you have a broad-based knowledge of things. So a lot of people ask me, what did I major in? I majored in biology. That was because I was advised by professors to major in biology. I had no idea that I didn't have to. Had I known that, I might have made a different decision because I feel like if you choose to major in the science and then what if you don't actually get into medical school what are you going to do with that degree most of the time when you have a science degree the next step would be either like a master's or a, get a job in a lab or teach and i don't want to do either one of those but so you know it was very crucial for me to match into a medical school if i was going to go into biology but if i had chose nursing or if i had chose business or accounting or something you know to where i could probably get a job afterwards then i would have had a backup plan so for some of you guys who are asking me what's better, it really doesn't matter what you major in. What you want to consider is what's going to prepare you for the MCAT and then overall prepare you for medical school in general. And most medical schools will tell you what prerequisite coursework you need to have in order to have a base foundation uh, of, of scientific knowledge in order to do well in medical school. And so I think across the board, all medical schools, or I'll say most medical schools require at least one year of general chemistry, one year of organic chemistry, one year of biology, and then either a semester or one year of English. Now, depending on the medical schools that you apply to, you may be required to have a semester of calculus, a semester of a semester or two, of physics and then a semester of statistics and most medical schools prefer you to take biostatistics or some type of epidemiology course and then you also may be required to have a, a couple of semester hours of humanities or behavioral science like sociology or psychology or ethics so be on the lookout for what the particular medical school actually requires it's different for every school okay so make sure you know uh, make sure you're Googling and looking up schools to see what they require. I actually pulled up a few and I'm going to share with you guys just to show you how different it can be for each program. So a lot of people ask me what medical school I attended. So I'm going to pull up the admission requirements for that school. So like I said before, I went to the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston, now referred to as McGovern Medical School. So if you go to their website and you go to their criteria and requirements page, and you scroll all the way down, it's gonna tell you what courses you need to take, right? So we have biological sciences, general chemistry, eight hours. So eight semester hours that'll equal a year. You need organic chemistry, that's a year. And then you need physics for this uh, medical school and then you also need English. What you don't see on here is calculus, 
psychology, sociology, you don't see any human behavior courses, even though those courses are typically taken um, across the board for anyone that's getting a degree. Those are like usually basic classes that everyone takes, but it's not required for admission here. And it even says here that even though bi biochem and statistics, psychology, sociology are not required in order to get into medical school, they are recommended that you be familiar with these subjects. So just taking it just to be familiar with it could possibly help you in medical school. A liberal arts education is an excellent basis for a medical career. So language, history, English, you know, philosophy, if you're interested in those things and that's what you like, major in it. Just make sure you take the courses that I explained here if you wanna to go to UT Houston. Now let's pull up some other schools around the country for our more prestigious medical schools or Ivy League schools um, like Harvard. Then if you go to their page and look at their prerequisite, they require one year of biology, two years of chemistry, um, and here it is, chemistry and biochemistry. You need one year of physics, you need one year of math, which includes calculus and statistics. And then you need one year of writing. Humanities or social science courses involving substantial writing will satisfy this requirement. So it looks like you can take English or sociology or whatever uh, to, to fulfill this requirement. But like I said, again, most degree plans, regardless of what you major in, will require at least one semester of English, probably two, and then at least one semester of some type of human behavior or humanities class. So that's Harvard. Here we have Baylor College of Medicine, and their first bullet point here is math, biostatistics preferred, okay? Other examples would be physics and calculus. You have to take English. Looks like they actually require 12 semester hours of a behavioral science. Here's that good old organic chemistry, and biochem is a requirement the lab is not required. And then they tell you that they actually recommend Spanish, okay? Okay, now I have a school for all of the potential DO applicants. If you wanna to apply to a DO medical school, this is um, PCOM in Georgia. So here are their admission requirements, a bachelor's degree from any university, uh, applicants with at least three years of exceptional undergraduate coursework will be considered. And what that means is that even if you don't have a four year degree, you may still be um, accepted into a medical school. Now, I do not advise any of you guys to uh, try to apply with 90 credit hours just because you want to hurry up and get in. Um, it is preferred to have a bachelor's degree. And as you can see, it has to be exceptional undergraduate work to be considered. So I would go for the degree. They also require biology. They require physics, 16 hours of chemistry, which of course is your general and your organic and then they require English. And I wanna just go ahead and like show you guys some stats uh, as far as MCAT and GPA. Uh, so this is why I put on all my TikTok videos to have a GPA of a 3.5 or above because it's not true that if you don't have a 3.5, you won't get accepted into medical school. That is not true. People have lower GPAs and they get accepted all the time. But I want you to focus on trying to aim for at least the average so that when you apply to medical schools, you apply in confidence, and comfortability, knowing that your scores and your application is competitive. That is why I recommend that you strive for a 3.5 or above. And as you can see here, their average GPA for people who got accepted into their program was 3.5. And here's their average MCAT, 500. Or a competitive MCAT is typically a 500 with a 125 in each subsection. But let's just look at a few more. Here's Brown medical school and as you can see they have one course in calculus or statistics biology chemistry physics and writing here we have john hopkins let's see what their requirements are so they have biology chemistry they do require humanities 24 semester hours that includes your english for math calculus and or statistics but you have to take a total of one year so most people probably take calculus and then one statistics or it looks like you can take statistics and maybe epidemiology and avoid calculus, and then you need physics. The MCAT needs to be taken one year prior to when you actually want to start medical school. So I'm gonna have a video that goes into detail about the timeline from starting college up until actually 
receiving your acceptance letter from medical school, okay? But for now, I just want to emphasize the fact that you have to take your MCAT prior to the application cycle closing. And the application cycle is an entire year, pretty much. So you take your MCAT the spring semester before the year that you actually want to start med school. So say you want to start med school in 2023, you will take your MCAT the spring semester of 2022. All right, and then as I told you guys previously, it sounds like an, a competitive MCAT score right now is like a 505 to 508. Um, depending on your race and ethnicity and stuff like that, you can definitely receive admission into a medical school with a lower MCAT. Um, and to prove it to you guys, I actually have a screenshot here that tells you what the average MCAT score is based off of race for people who actually got into medical school. And you can see here that the minorities of the, the Indian American population, the Hispanic population, the black African American population, they all have lower MCAT um, scores when compared to the Caucasian population or the Asian population. But know that the MCAT is required for every school, MD or DO, it doesn't matter. Um, if you're trying to train here in the US. Now there are some Caribbean schools that may not require MCAT. I'm not gonna talk too much about those because I'm not familiar with it. I need to do my research behind it, but I'm gonna give you guys that information because I know a lot of people will have to resort to going to a school like that that may not require an MCAT or doesn't require a competitive MCAT score. Next, I wanna talk about your resume slash CV. If you hear somebody say you need to have your CV uh, you know, together, all they're talking about is your resume. So the importance of your resume is to pretty much highlight what you've been doing um, you know, while in college. And whenever I applied to medical school, I don't think I included anything from high school unless it's something that I started in high school and continue to participate in throughout college. Other than that, I kind of left my high school stuff right where it was. So for your resume, you want to highlight any research opportunities that you participated in. And if you were able to be published, that's even better. Most medical school applicants aren't really published. So if you're published, that's great. Um, also, you want to emphasize any volunteer experience. Now, I've gotten a million questions about what should I volunteer in? Medical schools want to see you involved in healthcare related things. So nursing homes, clinics, hospitals, anything that you can potentially volunteer at would be good, okay? If it's in the healthcare field. But they also want to see that you're well-rounded. So if you're not able to volunteer in a healthcare setting, it's okay. Volunteer at an after-school program, volunteer at a summer program, volunteer on the weekends for a 5K run or whatever you can come across. Um, just show that you're committed to it, show that you're passionate about volunteering and helping others. And then overall, you want them to say, hey, this guy is unique. This girl, she's very different and unique. We like her. You want to be able to showcase yourself, right? You don't want to do everything that everybody else does because it does not help you stand out. So don't be afraid to volunteer in other areas. If you're passionate about it, your passion will shine through. So do it, put it on your resume. Another thing that you guys should emphasize on your resume is your work experience, especially if you have work experience in healthcare. If you don't have work experience in healthcare, it is perfectly fine. Schools love to see that people are able to maintain a good GPA, score well on the MCAT, volunteer, do research, and have a part-time job or a job on campus. So whatever you do, however you make money, if it's your own individual business, if you uh, choose to have a part-time job or a full-time job, whatever it may be, make sure you put it on your resume because it makes you look well-rounded as well as responsible and able to handle everything that you have to do. Another thing to include in your resume are any leadership roles that you actually participate in in organizations. So if you're on, uh, if you're in any organizations on campus, make sure you list those things. You can even have a brief description of what you do, or if you have a title, make sure you emphasize that title. Next is your personal statement. So you want to make sure you write a really, really good personal statement. I like to think of a personal statement or med school essay as a snapshot of your reason why, okay? And that really isn't expressed 
in too many other areas on the application. Um, most of the application are like your stats, like how well you're performing and what are you doing every day in your life. But your personal statement is your reason of why you're pursuing medicine in the first place. And if you have a moving and captivating personal statement, that may be just enough to overlook your average GPA, to overlook your not so good MCAT score, to overlook the fact that you failed something or had to take a, a year off or had to repeat a course, you know. So make sure you spend enough time on your personal statement. I like to recommend at least a couple of months because you need to write one, edit it, write it again, re-edit it, and then write it again, and then let somebody else edit it, and then write it again, okay? That is how important your personal statement is. Next are your letters of recommendation. You need to have at least three to five professors say yes to, and follow through with writing you a letter of recommendation. I recommend that you have three of those be science professors and then the other two non-science professors. Depending on the school you apply to, you may only need to submit three letters, four letters, or you may need to submit all five letters. So make sure you have a diverse mix of letters and make sure you're prepared because the last thing you want to do is only have asked three professors only have three letters and then apply to a school that you may actually qualify for but you're short two letters and now it's too late so i would go ahead and aim for five letters of recommendations um when you ask your professors to write letters for you make sure you're asking someone who is going to really really hype you up to the medical school, okay? You want someone who's gonna write something on your behalf that makes the medical school say, hey, well, if this professor feels X, Y, and Z about this student, then they probably would be a good match here. So make sure you're asking someone who's not gonna just submit a generic letter for you. If they do, it's okay. But you want someone who's gonna really, really speak highly of you. So therefore, you should ask someone that you may already have a personal relationship with and if you don't have a personal relationship and i don't mean inappropriately personal i just mean you participate in class you stay after you ask questions things like that maybe you ask for advice or mentorship or you go to their office and you work on problems anything that makes you stand out with the professor that's who i would ask make sure they're able to say oh she's committed she's dedicated she participates she's always on time she always stays late she always asks questions she always helps others those are the type of things you want to be in your letter of recommendation. So I hope this information was helpful to you guys. Let me know what questions you have down in the comment box or you can DM me on Instagram. If there's something that I'm not covering that you're confused about, please let me know and you know I will put a video out there for you. Be on the lookout for more videos that discuss all of this stuff in detail. Everything that I talk about, there's always a next step that comes along with it. You guys have a great day.